I'm going to be mixing all of this. You just seen me. It's wet because I was cleaning everything, but I'm gonna mix all of this and hopefully it'll make its own sauce. And then I'm gonna have it with some of this for lunch. Since I can't sleep, might as well make lunch. So that's what I'm doing. Stay ready so you ain't gotta get ready. Amen is. So I'm putting on some Mrs. Dash and then I just put on a bunch of uh, this. This is really a lazy meal, y'all. This is not anything. I just cut up a bunch of vegetables. I have peppers, I have leeks, mushrooms, and my favorite sausage from uh, Target. Is it from Target? Hold on. Yeah, this is, this is it. For those of us who are from New Orleans and you leave New Orleans and you miss your D&D &D sausages, this for me has been a close, not close, but it's good. It's I, right. it's good enough. I fucks with it. You know what I'm saying? So get get you one of these. Anyway, I'm about to just put some elbow grease in this, mix it up. That's butter. That's my business. But it's also not the dairy butter. You know what I mean? So here we are, just trying to do the Lord's work because I ain't got no goddamn olive oil. Anyway, cheerio. massage of my life that's that's all I will say so I know the lighting isn't great but I have to tell y'all I'm reading the obsession and it's the book pick for my book club and I am this close this close to DNF it it's about um, stalking and I typically hate stalking in a book, rather it's crime fiction or not. It's just too much for me. So I thought maybe I would be okay with this one or just try to see if there's an amount of stalking I'm okay with. And no, <laughs> I'm not okay with this at all. It's just being in their brain while they're, no. This first person shit, no, I'm done. I'm I'm this close from DNFing. Don't you hate it when you fall asleep and then you just naturally wake up like a few hours later and you can't sleep but you gotta be up early for work? Mad about it. Okay, y'all, let's get serious. So I'm reading the book that's called The Myth of Normal, and I am over 50% done, hope to get done today. But I want to talk to y'all about the field of psychology. And what I'm saying, these are just all my thoughts, my opinions, not a reflection of my current employer, past employer, none of that. I just want to be clear that this is just my own thoughts coming from my brain. I, for years, ever since I started to get into the field of psychology, have always not fully connected with the DSM. And the DSM, for those of us who may not know what it is, it's the Diagnostic Statistical Manual. And it's a manual that is used for a lot of clinicians to look at symptoms and see if a person fits the criteria or not for a disorder, right? And oftentimes when I look at it, I constantly find there is a lot of comorbidity in some of the symptoms, specifically when we're talking about autism and ADHD and um, even GAD, which is generalized anxiety disorder. It's just a lot of things that like run into each other, which 
what it means to be something to have comorbidity. And I've always been curious of why we can't really pin down what this disorder is or that disorder it is or or how it's being expressed and then this book it talks about like why that is and to critique the dsm and critique the field of psychology at large and one of the things that the book constantly talks about is how you know the dsm is used to just give you a description about you know what someone may feel or put a label on something and labels oftentimes as we all know in our current society is that labels can be helpful or labels can keep someone pigeon in or make someone feel like they are bound to the terms or the usage or the symptoms of the label and I've often found that a lot of times when it comes to things like oppositional defiant disorder and that's what the book is talking about and it's one of the disorders that I dislike the most because it's more about like how somebody is perceiving those symptoms versus of how someone is experiencing those symptoms and most times if I for example met a kid and the kid is um, having symptoms that fall in line with oppositional defiant disorder also known as ODD oftentimes I would bet money most times that it is really tied to trauma the trauma that that kid has been experiencing and it is being received as if the kid is just being defiant and being rude and breaking shit because that's what the kid wants to do or the kid wants to um, not listen to authority figures it's just things that I feel like we are not often as psychologists or therapists or psychiatrists, we are not often curious about the person's experience before we are assigning them to meet this set of symptoms that meets this certain disorder. And often that person experiences is also tied to their culture. And I feel the DSM really failed folks on that, on being, you know, conscious of those things and not saying that the DSM is complete hogwash or complete trash or that even medication is even because I've listen listen medication can get you where you need to go you want to be careful about that of course there sometimes there are some neurological things that is happening that cannot be addressed through talk therapy I'm a firm believer of that however I do think we need to worry and work with the person that's in front of you the person that you're seeing and try to help them with what's going on in their lives and their experiences and then also in the book they talked about how this person felt really seen when the person was like look you have an injury let's work on that injury versus looking at it as if you know you have this mood disorder that mood disorder this just I know I'm probably rambling, but it's just really important for me and in the practices that I do and how I interact with people is just to be more curious and investigative of what's happening in their lives. And a lot of times because we have a code of ethics, we are mandated reporters in that we are not supposed to investigate things because we are not police officers just in case something happens or we're not a part of law enforcement just in case something happens but just because we are not um you know just because we're not law enforcement agents in that regard don't mean that we have to stop being inquisitive and get an investigative across the board because giving people these labels and putting these things on people, like I said, it can be so affirming to be like, okay, I'm not losing my shit. There is something that describes what I'm feeling, right? However, we just need to also realize that we have a living being, a human in front of us. So a lot of times it can come from trauma. And in the book, it talks about the effects of small T trauma and big T trauma and what that looks like. And I just feel like I've been a therapist for a long time. <laughs> I've been a therapist for a long time. So it is not lost on me. Most people that I've interacted with, rather it was therapeutic or not, have trauma. They have trauma and most of their symptoms can be described 
by those injuries, right? It can be explained by those injuries. So what I'm saying is this book is very informative and very affirming to how I feel about psychology and where we're going to and also how I feel about you know the DSM and and things I think that could be better and as people who are underneath the umbrella of psychology let's just be better and be more inquisitive and and think about the person in front of us before we throw a label at them and let's work on addressing the injuries and the symptoms versus explaining things with a paintbrush like oh you have autism that's that's just who you are you just that's it without helping them through those symptoms or helping them be even inquisitive of their own life awareness is a powerful thing a powerful thing mixed with action but awareness is a first step to being like okay there are some things that i am doing that i want to be able to do in a more healthier manner and that is my long TED talk. Um, I have some other thoughts too, but I'm gonna sit more on that and, and you know, just try to figure out like how I'm feeling about a lot of the things that are saying in the book that it's also challenging like my own process and my own way of um, interacting with other people in a therapeutic sense and in a non-therapeutic sense. So that's what I wanted to say. You know, that's me throwing my keys. Our fucking world is just fucked up. Like, the fact that we have people who literal job is to make, is to find products that will replicate addiction. And that could be in the form of like fast fashion and the form of Red Bull. And we know that that's not a re renewable energy source and just sugar the book y'all is taking me through it it's just like <sighs> there's so many points of how toxic culture is tied to trauma that i you know i knew like a part of me knew it existed but having to read this book and be faced with it is, is a different thing it's a different thing it's it's blowing my mind. I'm also reading about how the author is talking about racial disparities and how it ties to health concerns and, you know, diseases and things that, you know, Black and African Americans are faced with and how menthol, like cigarettes, menthol cigarettes targets Black communities and how, you know, the cancer and all of that is tied to menthols. And it's just like, so y'all really out here being like, look, I'm gonna go ahead and tar target black people and not saying that I'm shocked by this. We all know I'm not shocked by this, but I never knew that that w was happening. I never knew that was happening. And <sighs> I'm just so pissed reading this book and finding out how all uh, how other things are connected like of course i know things are connected but it's just you know it's equally just unsettling and you know i, I i'm just <laughs> i've just had enough and now we're talking about you know how women are not able to express their trauma and what it means for when you have been told by your family or society that you can't express your trauma or express your anger, which is a natural part of living. I say that all the time. I think it's so fucked up and I know why it exists, but it's still fucked up that black people, specifically black women, are taught that their voices don't matter and that we have to just shrink down to whatever we're around and and, and be more, um, uh, what is it, like applicable or malleable to white folks or non-black folks in order to be seen as a human being, barely, right? Barely. But we aren't allowed to express our anger as if, you know, in ways that white women are able to. And how that is just fucking us up. And I always say that. And I'm just glad that there was another man, specifically white man, in this book who address who addresses that. Like 
it's there. Like, <laughs> I just, I don't know. I'm just getting upset. <laughs> I'm just getting upset. But also, like, yeah, you know, you, you always need a reminder. And he mentioned a couple books that I want to read. I feel like I read An Unquiet Mind in college. But I want to go back to it. So I took that from the library. And um, it's a book about moccasins. I'll put that in the description box or have it somewhere up here. It's a book about moccasins written by an indigenous woman that uh, he consistently references throughout the book. And um, I want to read those books as well. But y'all, I guess this is all about me talking about the myth of normal. Um, I need to get a physical copy of this book yesterday 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 because i i need it there and you know here we are here we are grieving while reading but we gotta do we gotta do so i'll see you on the next clip i'm on my way to all these uh to look for some specifically i thought i could find it at the at the thrift store and that was a lie i always go to the thrift store first so let me see if i can find it somewhere else okay bye Okay, y'all, I have no idea what I'm doing, but I just cut up all of that so I can fit this in my car. So I'm going to see if it works. I just eyeballed it, honestly. I, I have no idea. I feel like I should have made this even to the other side. Don't come at my toes, but I don't know. We'll see. I'm out here fighting for my life every day, B. Every day. So I know this lighting is not great, but I had to cut some more pieces, but let me move my boots out the way. You can see that it fits. Fits all the way across. So that's good. Whew. Look, I get that this is ghetto. I get it. I get it. But my plants are going to thank me for this. That's some command hooks, some twine. I have many of these grow lights and I was like, oh, I should buy one. No, let's be ingenious and use what we have. I spent money on those grow lights. So I am here showing you how I got this contraption up. I might add one more light, but we'll just see how life goes right now. But I got to move some of these. Some of these got to be moved to over here. And sometimes this light don't be doing the Lord's work. And I have this, which is a smart plug that I'm going to have it on a timer. It's going to cut on and go off the same time every day. So that's for some of these. Look at them. They got to they gotta move over here, especially this one who's trying to head out. I've cut like... So many leaves have come off in the last month, and I think it's a lighting slash I was overwatering. You gotta be careful with fiddles. Anyway, we're gonna bring we're gonna bring them back to health. And some of these, they they that one for show. Sure. Gotta bring her raggedy self over there. All right, amen. Excuse my laundry that you may or may not see, but this is the look. The finished product i don't think i showed y'all but i do need to water the plants that's going to be something i do a little later um author trying to head out on me but i won't let it happen so that's why you see me cutting off certain parts of the plant so hopefully we can come back like we never left and we can work on um staying together yeah 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 so that's what we have there. And then this side just have just a few plants over here. So I have these plants in water um, with some, what is it, LECA? So this is a very beautiful plant, as you can see, very beautiful plant. Hope you're able to see that. And yeah, so that's what we have going on here. And this is here is to keep them down. They'll fall off. These are actually for my friend. I cut off. I grew these cuttings for her. So whenever she can get them. Uh-uh. Now we're trying to die. Y'all, don't think all my plants are beautiful. Some of them be struggling. 
And this one has a mind of its own. Look at that. That's crazy. But anyway, that's the setup. I'm not showing my face because it's crusty. This is the new laptop, y'all. Understand. Lula May Brown. Yeah. So, let's get to it. This her, this her. So, what I'm going to do is try to edit this vlog that I'm doing on Final Cut Pro. Do I know what the hell I'm doing? No. But, I'm going to try. So, let's get into this. Um, I may do a few more clips today on this vlog. And then, we will call it one. Amen. Ha <laughs> ha. y'all um did i get stuff done yes um am i still working on some other stuff yes so you're gonna see this outfit this look again okay you're gonna see it again it just is what it is but i do want to thank y'all for making it to this point of the vlog i appreciate it and if you have please put like a green emoji whatever it is do, do what you want and um, I thank y'all and I hope to get some more stuff done and, you know, let y'all know what's going on on next week's vlog um, and possibly just include a little bit more background stuff and just to tell y'all what I'm reading because I've been working on this secret project so I can't really tell y'all like all the stuff I'm reading. Just know I am reading a lot. I'm tired of reading in the specific genre right now. I need a break. So I can't wait till I'm done. I'm on the last book and I can be done. You know what I mean? So the things I do, understand? Anyway, see y'all later. Have a wonderful day. Talk to y'all later.